Good morning, Joseph. Rabbi Joseph Adery. Um, I'm very happy that we uh, were able to make it. So yesterday there was a lot of uh, issues. I hope everything is settled. You're yes, busy. Baruch Hashem. You're, you're busy. You're yes, it's really, these days we need to be focused. I, I feel like uh, today there's a lot of opportunity. Just like everybody is saying, there's a lot of opportunity if you're not, if you're, but, the, but there's a lot of distractions. Yes. And you have so many options to distract yourself and, and so many people that are trying to just waste your time, basically, or they, they're not on your level. You're trying to go ahead, but you're surrounded with family and friends that are just not on the level that it's, that I think is a real test. If you can be nice enough and kind enough and open open your heart and, and spend time in upgrading the people around you is not less important than you being ready to do what's correct because you can only go as fast as the slowest person in your circle. So yes. for me, my friends, my, uh, I need, I need certain friends. They're very good people. I love them, but I need to tell them adios because there's not enough understanding. And then other people that I think, they, uh, that are, uh, you know, that, that they have a chance. I just need to try to upgrade them. So we really, it's really about staying focused on learning, praying, uh, doing charity, acts of kindness to our fellow man, and and being successful in, in this world so that we can use that success to help with Hashem's projects. The point is, for me, sometimes I just need to go to sleep. I need to eat better. I need to take a shower. So I need to just focus on myself and just reset my, 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 you know, my situation. And uh, we're back. We're back. And we're super, you know, super. ready to roll. And this is, uh, you know, this is uh, awesome because, you know, we were talking also within our community now over the last, uh, you know, we had, uh, you know, our Zoom meeting for the parasha. And then on Sunday, we're talking about all the uh, business issues, you know, what's are currently, you know, how uh, we, we progress with our, um, you know, supportive of the, um, you know, Sanhedrin initiative and all this issue. And uh, so our focus was really where I said, okay, listen, guys, we, we really have to get out of this futile discussions, which are currently running out on Facebook, of Telegram and so on and so on. Okay. Uh, we, we are focused on the Torah. And I think currently the only way how to get out of the situation we are in today, and I mean worldwide, is to take a look into the terms of service. You know, into the, our um, AGBs, you know, into our um, terms of service, you know, the, the Bible, you know, because this is what Hashem the Bible. does. So, so the whole, uh, sorry, I'm running around here. Yeah, it's pretty cold here. <laughs> so, so the whole world is running around and figuring out, you know, what rules to apply and so on. And so wait a second, we have a rule book here. It's very simple. You know, when you love God and you love your neighbor as yourself, well, then you fulfilled all the laws and the prophets. Okay. But currently we are in a situation. So I, I'm, um, Today I figured this out. I wanted to show. I, I show you this. You know. Um, okay. Okay. It's right. So, is Israel heading in the direction of theocracy? I mean, we are mm -hmm. current. We are currently now in a position, you know, where people like. Can you zoom in? Oh, sorry. Ah, okay. Is there is there a way to zoom in? Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Can you can you make? Yeah, there we go. Yeah. So this is here from today. The, uh, even before the final results were announced, Likud members of far right and ultra orthodox parties were making their demands. So now I have here Mika seven two three. The faithful have been swept from the land. Not one upright person remains. Everyone lies in wait to shed blood. They hunt each other with nets. Both hands are skilled in doing evil. The ruler demands gifts. No? Demands, here they're working their demands. The judges accept bribes. 
the powerful dictate what they desire and they all conspire together. Today in Davos. Today in Davos. So a quick look da at the, ah, the, the Davos, the Davos summit where they're going to decide, or at least they think they're going to decide what the fate of humanity is going to be for the next couple of years. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So a quick look where we take a look in the prophets, I get more information about the current situation than in any other <laughs> news outlet, in any other, other news outlet, because now they're afraid. I said, oh, my gosh, uh, uh, our democracy is going. Israel, oh, should Israel, what do we do? Will this be a theocracy? No, a kingdom. A kingdom, this is a kingdom. kingdom. So what comes out now, yes. and this is what we came out, he said, so in our um, TorahClub.com, so we have now this new uh, community, you know, in um, where created a circle for the Sanhedrin initiative and invite, of course, everybody to really step by step going into the study of the Torah about the kingdom, about the Moshiach, about the current situation and how we are able to solve whatever is out there according to our you know, terms of service, our terms of service. Yeah? So um, we do have the opportunity okay, good. and possibilities. Oh, I want Okay. You let me know. Uh, okay, go ahead. Yeah. yeah you know, via challenges, you know, because one of the issues is we have to actively pull people out of TikTok, out of Rumble, out of Facebook, out of out of all these, and bring the discussion into our discussion group on Torah. Yeah, on the side. One hundred percent. Oh, I want to say that you you have right now um, about some thousand five hundred members, right? Correct. Yeah, on Torah Club, yes. Oh, exactly, and there's, and there's, um, it, obviously, it's not on the level of, of 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 our competition, which is Facebook and all these guys. But there's no, definitely, no. there's definitely options for people to discuss and 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 to have some kind of a comment situation and community and share share their opinions on different uh, stuff that we're you know that the, the videos that we're producing, obviously. Um, Unlike on YouTube, where you just type a comment and uh, and you know nobody answers you, I hope that in uh, that one of the things that we could do is that when people comment on on the Torah Club on the stuff, especially if they address me or you or the people that are actually involved, we're actually gonna reply and respond, and the community is real. It's not a bunch of bots. It's not eighty percent bots. And the, and and the creators are not just fishing for more people. We actually care about the people that we're engaging in. I want it to be a you know, and hope you're right because I mean, Rumble is very good, better than YouTube. Yeah, uh, TikTok is is better than Facebook. There's a little more freedom, but at the end of the day, it's you know, right now, by the way, Twitter, even though Elon Musk um, purchased Twitter. Um, BlackRock, which is one of these shady, you know, Illuminati companies, just bought about 49% of the Twitter stock. In other words, so imagine you finally have a guy like Elon Musk that wants to bring at least some level of freedom to the discussion, and he buys out Twitter for an extremely crazy, absurd amount of money. Um, and and after he does that, you have a company like BlackRock. That's coming in and saying, ah, don't worry, we're going to buy out 49%. We're still in business. Don't worry. We're still going to tell you what to do. And, and not only that, the fact that we have all these leaders like I, I, uh, that are, that are okay, like senile. Black, but I think it's awesome. BlackRock, you know, you, you have to understand how the whole world is structured. You see, everybody. I know, I know. People is owned everybody can... by BlackRock. So who owns BlackRock? Oh, they are owned by uh, each well, other. I can I can own BlackRock. Everybody can invest in BlackRock. It's yeah. on the stock market. I under, I understand that. I understand that 100%. But at the same time, the, the 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 leadership of BlackRock is very very sketchy. Nobody really knows what the deal is. Yeah, and I'm you saying. have Yes, you have people that are like like Joe Biden and and even Bibi Netanyahu, you, the leadership today in the world is a joke. It's 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 a it's a mockery of the people in the countries. In other words, it's almost like you get it, like you're in an adoption and and they give you to like the crappiest drug drug addicts to be your parents. 
abusive parents. So, and the reason for that is, is they're trying to destroy society. They're trying to make us feel like shit. Excuse my French. They're trying to make us feel like garbage. I, um, but this is the whole issue what we had with the left. We have to understand that the left are those guys who left Christianity and Judaism to follow the teachings of Karl Marx and everything what came out of this. So there are... Oh, oh, I want to I wanna say that 100%. Anti-Torah, anti-Israel. And this is exactly... So they really built our democracy. We really have to understand this. The, the central bank is a socialist issue. So they, the whole, all the structure we have today is built, our democracy is built by socialists. So, and we are now at the point where enough people take a look now into the Torah, into the Bible, into the prophetic words and say, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. But this, this is, it is totally unnatural. They say they are Jews, they say they are Christians, but they don't do that. What they are doing, they're destroying the family, you know, that uh, uh, having high taxes, you know, now they're shutting all down energy supply for like, okay, we should go back into the cave, you know, um, no, no atomic energy, no fossil fuel, no, that, nothing anymore, you know, just like a little hamster creating, <laughs> like, I mean, you no know, home for uh, um, stuff, you're not allowed to travel anymore. This is a green utopia. It's totally, absolutely destructive and a menace to humanity. And it's created a hundred percent. Oh, if I let's go, let's go, let's go back into what we spoke about last time, because I think what we spoke about in our last video is one of the most crazy topics that we ever discussed with Rome yes. and, uh, and, and, and how Rome operates. And I told you that yesterday that I'm going to try to address this even deeper. I want to go into that. And this is going to help us also understand the, the, what, how the left thinks. So let's talk about Rome. So, Rome has two things that we're going to discuss today. Number one, crazy bloodshed, okay? And number two, adultery and immorality, okay? So last week we focused on the adultery and immorality and what we could learn from the hooker, like we said, right? That when the hooker tests us, it's to check, are you special or are you just another you know, number? Are you just another digit in the world yeah. and you're just going to fall? But we need to understand why it's so important for Rome to make the righteous person fall for the hooker. And this is what we're going to discuss today. So um, we know that Esau has a bracha, Esau, the father of Edom, the father of Rome. He has a blessing that he got, a blessing from his father, Isaac. Al You should live on your sword. Okay, so you can watch a thousand movies uh, um, uh, 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 that Hollywood puts out, and we're going to give you now the right way to look at it. You see uh, these these guys, they go out to Iraq, they go out to Iran, whatever, they go, they kill a bunch of people, and they, they can kill 10,000 people, it doesn't bother them. All of a sudden, they kill the wrong guy, and then the Secret Service of Russia or a different country goes and kills their kids kills their wife, kills their kids. All of a sudden, the video stops. You see the guy crying. They killed my baby. You stupid idiot. You've been killing people for 10... You just killed 10,000 people on the other side of the world. You didn't blink. You didn't even blink. Now they killed your wife and your kid. All of a sudden, the whole world is, is destroyed. What are you, an idiot? What the hell do you think you were doing till now? And, and this is the, the paradox how selfish and stupid can you be? You just destroyed 10,000 people's lives. You destroyed 100,000 people's lives because you killed this guy and this guy was a father, a grandfather, a brother. You, you destroyed everybody's life around those people. You killed 10,000 people, dropping bombs. You don't get, oh, uh, uh, da, 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 talking on your walkie-talkie, right? And then, and then, oh, they killed your kid. All of a sudden, you start crying. They turn on the, salt, the, the sad music. Yes, yes, the, yes, the, yes, the murderer, yes, the murderer, yeah, the murderer just lost his child. Let's feel bad for him, and then he goes on a revenge. He's gonna go find out which asshole killed his kids. Excuse my French again. Now, what's happening here is like this: the 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 guy is killing and killing and killing and killing and killing. 
and he's killing indiscriminately. Just like we spoke about the hooker, that, that for the right price, anybody can come to her. Yes. This guy that's killing, he doesn't care if he's killing men, women, children. He's just getting paid. He's an idiot. He's a real idiot. And he's killing indiscriminately, just like the hooker indiscriminately doesn't mind destroying lives, as long as her life is not destroyed. The same thing, the, the Edom way is you go and you kill whoever you want, and it doesn't matter who you're killing, as long as your life is okay, as long as there's a chance you walk away. And this, so imagine the warrior in Rome, because you know, we went back all the way thousands of years to the bathhouse here in, in Hamad Gader, here in Israel. So imagine a warrior in Rome. He goes on a campaign. He goes, he kills 1,000 people, 2,000 people. He makes it out alive. He comes back to tell the tale. So now he's just sitting at home and his conscience is he's just eating him up. He's saying, how did you just kill 2,000 people? Who, why do you deserve this? You know, how, 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 how are you still alive? You don't deserve to be alive after you killed 2,000 people. Nobody has to punish him. He's just thinking this by himself. No, he got the reward. So the only... He gets, this is the, gets, I mean, this course. is the yeah, yeah. of Julius Caesar. All the, but all the money in the world, all the money in the world, yeah, he gets rewarded, he gets a big plot of land, and he gets everything he wants so that he can sit quietly between him and Hashem and realize that he's a piece of shit. That's what it's for. It's his own hell. It's his own hell. He has a big house, a lot of servants cleaning the floor in order that he should sit by himself and think about what he did. And now he thinks to himself, I killed thousands of people. Now my life, I'm sitting on a pension. I'm fine. I made it out alive. And he can't live with himself. So what does he do? He says, okay, if I can prove that we're all the same and everything I did doesn't even matter, then maybe I could live with myself. How am I going to do that? I'm going to get some hookers. I'm going to line them up next to the righteous people, next to those people who never killed anybody. I can't tell a righteous person, go kill people. He's never going to do it, even if I pay him a million dollars. You know, you have these videos. I saw a video of a guy. He says, if I give you $10,000, but somebody else in the, in, in the world dies, would you do it? And these people say yes. Most of the people, 90%, 99% of the people say yes. And that's why they're not Jews, by the way. <laughs> that's why they're not Jews because the Jews will say if you give me nine cents if you give me a million dollars nobody's dying I'm sorry that's the correct way that's the Bible's way pay me a billion dollars and no, I'm not doing it unless it's unless I could choose who it is if I can choose that it's Dr. Fauci or Bill Gates <laughs> then it's different the but Pope. but if I or the Pope exactly but if I can't choose who it is it's not happening so the point is that once so the, the, the soldier that killed indiscriminately, in order to put himself at ease, he tries to get the, the righteous person to sin. And then he says, you see, even the righteous person can sin. We're all the same. This is a kind of why it helps. Why it helps him is a psychological thing. Why is it so important for him to mess with the, the righteous person? Why is he so jealous of the righteous person that never kills and never steals? And never, never sins. Why is it so important for, for Rome to push the hooker into everybody's face? Why is it so important for, for him to mix his own issues with everybody else's business? I don't to understand. Male, but this I'm is telling you, it's like all blackmail issue. I mean, the, the whole Roman system from the top, where the, uh, the Roman emperor, you know, gives the orders and tells everybody what they have to believe, how they have to behave or so on. You know, it creates the whole system uh, we are uh, living in today. You know, it's uh, and you're um, even worse. You are indebted to everybody. You're indebted to everybody. I said this in one point, you know, this, um, you know, in a way, when you go to vote, when you go vote, you basically order some random guy to do something you would never do. You know, because, you know, you vote for Biden. Okay, now suddenly you send 87,000 uh, uh, weaponized IRS agents out to take money from you, rob and steal. You wouldn't do that. So why are you making now a cross to give somebody else? It's, it's the same thing. So this is why this whole democracy issue. Now I was, okay, we are in a free 
country. And I thought, you know, always the government is there to protect my rights, you know, doing business, traveling, chaka chaka, you know, making peace with other guys. And now it comes out, that's not true. Now the government is there to educate you. Why? Because they owe to Rome up to this day. Israel up to this day, Germany up to this day, the United States up to this day. Oh, I want to say, by the way, that Otsma Yehudit is a phenomenon, is, Sorry, a, is a new Otsma Yehudit, the right-wing party, yes. Jewish power, in, in, uh, in the Knesset today with Itamar Ben-Gvir, is a, is a mistake, just like Trump was a mistake. Otsma Yehudit right now is a mistake. It's a break in the matrix. And I believe that it's a good break. And I think that it's, 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 uh, it's not something that uh, the, the, the New World Order can do anything about because the people at the end of the day, they do have a certain, you know, certain amount of power at the end of the day. And I just want to say that uh, I was invited to the Knesset to talk to uh, some people over there about, you know, different things. Um, and some of my friends told me, you're wasting your time. You know, the government is like going into the toilet and trying to, to have a, 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 a Michelin chef, uh, you know, make you a dinner on the toilet bowl. You know, why are you dealing with the government? Um, why are you even wasting your time going to the Knesset to talk to these politicians? This is, there's nothing good that ever came out of it. Um, and I and and with some of my friends, uh, you know, I definitely see what they're saying. But I do believe that Otsma Yudit is special. They're truthful, and they're trying their best in the circumstance that they that, that they have presented to them. And I do believe that there's a reason why the right wing uh, overwhelmingly um, won this past election. They had a uh, they had a protest. The left had a protest. Uh, this past week, maybe 13,000 people were at the protest. It was kind of a joke. Um, and, and at the end of the day, it's a distraction from the real issues, which is that uh, Itamar ben is is finally directing the police to stop harassing the random people in the streets, and they're going to start actually cracking down on real crime, making Israel a safer place from terror attacks, uh, breaking up uh, different hamulot, we call it, like which is like small Arab Arab family structures that are importing drugs and destroying the youth. So they're going down. They're going down. They're going hard on uh, on the real crime, and they're and they're kind of forget. And they're stopping to harass the simple people. So in any case, I I see Hashem's hand, you know, guiding the natural way of 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 events and Absolutely. because i know these people in otsma and it and it and it and in a natural way they said yelsi why don't you come and talk to us sit in nishte kos cafe we'll drink a cup of coffee and uh and i have a few friends that are like you know yelsi we should yeah we'll go with you and some of my friends are like you're wasting your time but in any case we're gonna go we're gonna talk to them about the uh, sanhedrin initiative and a few other things and uh, we're going to see where, where it security goes. Security clearance? Security clearance? Security clearance, yes. It, oh, hi. That's the, the second thought that I always had when I'm thinking about it is I wish you would be here with me. <laughs> we could yes, go together. absolutely. Absolutely. Because, uh, I mean, um, you know, when I, um, when I went out, when I started, you know, some uh, seven, seven years ago, restarted the whole um, Ephraim nation issue, um, I said, okay, you know, when I would choose a title, you know, I would call myself an independent sense maker. Yeah, I make totally independent sense out of all the chaos out there because due to my uh, lifetime travel, businesses, and so on, languages, and so on and so on, um, I can make really sense out of the current situation. You know, we, we talked uh, uh, very shortly, briefly about the whole issue with Michael. Michael, so Wolf, I want to say I, I I will give you this. I will give you this. I will print the letter that for Itamar Ben Gvir, and I will hand it to him or one of the representatives of Osmayudit personally. I think that's the best way to do it because if I send him an yes. email or a WhatsApp, it's not the same. You know, I'm going to give him the letter in his hand, um, the one that we put together, 
and uh, hopefully that will have uh, and I'll explain them of course any questions they have I'll explain them on the spot I think that's the best way of course uh, we already sent them uh, even before they were they won the election um, uh, one of the temple coins so uh, I'm just going to make sure that it made it to it yes, bank here. yes with and, the temple uh, coins you know um, I mean there uh, we uh, thought about this also you know when we mentioned this just now um, there will, uh, it's upcoming, you know, to basically uh, that every male, you know, should pay their, um, their tax, you know. So we should time this and then, you know, start in advance to really, you know, uh, spread the message. Yes, you know, you want to fulfill the commandment, the mitzvah to send your coin. Here you can order it and then, um, you know, it lands in the temple treasury. So, um I think you know when the the whole issue with the uh, uh, current uh, now in the moment you know um, Itamar Ben Gvir went on top of the Temple Mount. Okay, the world spotlight, and this is basically this is what it's all about because this is bought with gold by King David, all right, and uh, so since basically Israel came back, you know. So when they came back, it was a social. I mean, it, there was the, the 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 Zionist government. You know, oh, it's very the Rebbe. The Rebbe spoke about this. The Rebbe said that after the Hashem sowed miracles for the Jewish people on the Six Day War, and the Jewish people conquered the whole entire land of Israel. Now the Jewish people at the time were stuck in exile mentality, yes. and they they couldn't even grasp or appreciate the level of the miracles that Hashem made, so much so that the weakest link between us, the secular, they gave back the land to the Arabs. Yes. Now, I will tell you why that giving back of the land to the Arabs is null and void. There is no way that they're allowed to give back the land that Hashem gave us. First of all, let's talk about international law for a minute. If you win a battle, especially a defensive battle, the Jewish people did not attack the Arabs. The Arabs attacked the Jewish people with the intent of destroying and dis slaughtering every Jew with a knife to the throat in the most gruesome way. That was the plan. Yes. Some of the people that voted in the United Nations that Israel should exist, they were secretly hoping that because they give their vote that Israel should exist, the Arabs would have a legitimate reason to go and slaughter every single Jew for the last man finish what Hitler did. So when the Jewish people win the Six Day War, according to the law, just like Germany belongs to America because they won in the, in the, in the, uh, the World War II, and Russia, uh, Russia and America divided, you know, East Germany, West Germany, and that's why Russia is so upset that, that NATO is coming all the way up to their border because they said, we won World War II. You guys get half of Europe. We get half of Europe. That was the agreement. And now you guys are coming all the way up to, all the, way up to the border of Ukraine. That's not, you know, that's not how it was. In, in any case, let's go back to Israel. The fact is Hashem created miracles in a defensive war and gave the land of Israel. The Rebbe says that no one Jew can give back land. You need permission from every, because it's Nachlas Olam, an everlasting inheritance that Hashem gives to the Absolutely. Jewish people. You have to go to the children of Israel one by one and ask them, are you ready to give back? Are Absolutely. you ready to give back the Sinai? Are you ready to give back the, the, the West Bank? Are you ready to give back Gaza? And if every single Jew in the world doesn't say yes, you have no right to do it, even if you have some kind of Zionist government that's, of course, not religious anyway. So the point I'm trying to say is, is that at the moment, like right now, when Itamar ben Gvir and the right-wing religious Orthodox Jews run the house, as they say, they run the Knesset with 64 votes and a majority, and they're going to start implementing the Jewish law, the fact is, at the end of the day, the land of Israel belongs to the Jewish people. Yes. And the fact that right now the Sinai Desert is being held by the Egyptians and they're selling us the gas that they pump from the, from the Sinai Desert, we're doing them a favor right now. But if they, they shouldn't be surprised if we ask them to give it back and if they say, no, we bomb, we bomb, you know, we take over Egypt just because we're bored. What I'm trying to say is 
every single, like, just like you said, King Solomon bought the Temple Mount. I'm going to bring it back to that, and then I'm going to let you continue. King Solomon bought the Temple Mount with gold and silver. Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, they bought the Ma'arat Abraham bought uh, the Ma'arat HaMachpelah in Hebron for a high price, for silver coins from the best, best kind of silver coin. It's from Ephron Achiti. And uh, in the beginning, he's like, hey, you can have it for free. And then Abraham Avinu is like, I want to pay. He's like, oh, you want to pay? Give me the top dollar, you know? <laughs> so <laughs> we... Exactly. So, th so this land belongs to us, number one, yes. like you said, because you, King Solomon, King David, Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, we've always chosen the way of peace, and we bought it for full price. Number two, in recent history, because we won a defensive battle, and the rules of, of a defensive battle is you own the land that you conquer, especially if the other guy was here to kill you and slit your throat. Number three, even if the government gave it back, it's null and void. That transaction doesn't matter because they did not have the permission of the majority or even all 99% of the Jewish people. Of course, the Rebbe was crying. The, 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 the Rebbe's wife, the Rebetzin, Chaya Mushka, she said that one of the things that caused there were very few things that caused the Rebbe's hair to turn white. One of them was the giving away land of, by the Israeli government. The, the second thing was Giyur uh, Kahalacha. What's happening here? Well, so. What was the second, please? It was. Um... What was the second it was uh, cut off? So yeah, the, the first thing was, the first thing that caused the Rebbe a lot of pain was, and caused his hair to turn white was uh, giving away land. The second thing, Giyur Kahalacha, the fact that the Israeli government made that you can have a conversion that's not according to uh, Halacha, according to Orthodox Jewish law. And the third thing was that the Hasidim were fighting between themselves sometimes, you know. Those are the three things that cause the Rebbe the most amount of pain. So I just wanted to address that. Go ahead, Ulf, continue. Uh, yeah, the whole issue with the land, okay? So, uh, of course, you know, this is our testament. This is our testament. You know, this is what we got from our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and what was transferred for the elders now. So the real constitution of Israel, well, this is the Torah from Moses, from uh, the revelation from Mount Sinai. You know, so this is the Israeli constitution. Now, everybody in the world knows this. Everybody in the world knows this. Now, during this age, in this age, you know, I think they had to find a solution. They had to find a solution um, because of Rome, because of Rome. Rome was a world superpower and, you know, was reenacted, if you know, in the um, Holy Roman Empire of German nation. And they ruled supreme. Meaning that, um, yes, the Jewish people, they belong to Israel and so on and so on. But, you know, back some hundred years ago, well, the Jewish people were destroyed. They were scattered all over the world, you know. And there had to be a movement where it said, okay, how do we tackle this superpower? How do we tackle Rome? How do we tackle Rome? So in this age, they made contracts. They made contracts. And, you know, this is why the uh, America was built. In, in, a, in the American Revolution, so that they are a nation under God. And in the French Revolution, where well, they made like this without God, you know, like um, of science and, you know, so the, but it was a Freemason, it was a both a Freemason built government. So now we are at the end of 250 years of development where the, this former law, you know, yes, the Jewish people, they have the Talmudic, they have the Talmudic, uh, uh, they have the Talmudic halacha. Okay? Yeah. But you had for ages this canonical law from the Roman Catholic Church. And yes, the Jews, they were allowed, yeah, they had to pay taxes, they had to walk around and so on and so on. But everybody was believing in Jesus, baby. I mean, it's, you know, I'm, and I'm absolutely happy that I did not, you know, grew up in this time, that I grew up in this time, because it must be terrible, you know, because the whole issue with, uh, you know, with forceful conversion, 
Yes, you have to believe, and otherwise you get killed, you get, you know, uh, you know I mean, it was terrible. The Spanish Inquisition, absolutely. So now there had to be a move. So the best thing they could come up with is socialism. It's socialism, because, you know, you have, like, um, you know... <laughs> I want to say that there's... Yeah? Okay, sorry, there was some... But, you know, so now I'm back. Okay. So, so the... Um, uh, and like... I talked about this, and I tried to also explain this to Rabbi Feld. We please, 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 we do have to understand, yes, there are people who believe that the Bible is true. But the majority, they never took a look at this. They have no idea. So the word was transferred into a business, into a business, okay? So there is an imaginary Earth Inc., right? So before it was the Pope, the Pontifex Maximus, head over all kings in Europe, he made the claim that every square meter, every soul on this planet, you know, belongs to him, you know, and only after the revolution that they said, okay, you know what, so we grab the empire, this complete empire, you know, we grab this out and transfer this into business units. Okay, so now this is what we came up after uh, for First and Second World War, that the United Nations all United Nations are business units. The United Nations, the UN, the WHO, it's a business. You know, so what services are there? Okay, you want to become a nation. Yes, you can, uh, Israel, you can come become a member nation. So you have to sign the Carter. Yeah. Then you have to sign that you have become part of the central bank system of the uh, Bretton Woods Agreement, that you have, you know, a dollar backed economy. And then you have to um, accept the uh, health standard of the WHO. Then you have the, uh, and of course, in Israel, very important, you know, UNRWA, you know, the United Nations Refugees um, Agency, which is solely there to keep the Palestinians in a status nobody else has, you know, as refugees. So it's totally ridiculous, you know. Over, over. I want to say that when, when Pharaoh was king of Egypt, there was one group that was never under his law, and that was Shevet Levi. They were studying the Torah all day. Now, if you ask me, the priests, also the priests in Egypt, the, the secular priests, even though the whole country had to sell their land, the priests still had their land. And it's, yeah. not, it's not by mistake that the religious people always have exemption from the, 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 the exile. The reason for that is, is because the priests if in other words like we say here the legitimacy of the government comes from hashem and the priests honestly they're closer to hashem than the government is they should so the government really they should you they, know they are. They are. Cohen, they are. even Cohen. even Bilam, <laughs> even Bilam, which was not jewish he was stooping his donkey but he was a prophet and he he was closer to hashem then their random government, the kings. The kings yeah. gave them all their gold and silver. They said, go curse the Jews, whatever. But the point I'm trying to say is that even Pharaoh had no strength over the religious, the correct religious powers. So the, the Nimrod, which is... Oh, nobody, the, the nobody father, has, nobody. Nobody, uh, you read all the prophets, whatever, they were forcefully died, they got beaten, they get, uh, you know, put into prison. You know, a righteous person will never bow down, never. He will not bow down, his, he will not bend his knee before some, you know, like like the the buddies of Daniel. No, oh, 100%. Everybody's bowing down. Oh, look at this, we are suddenly the biggest. Okay, no, no, we don't know why. Yeah, we go into the you know, Daniel. Daniel, in, in Daniel's day, it was illegal to pray to Hashem. Yes. And he he went to pray anyway. and they caught him. They put him in the lion's den. And Daniel is surrounded by, let's say, 10, 20 lions in a, in a hole in the ground. And, and the, the, the lions, he's not scared of them. He's petting them. They haven't eaten in three days. They're yes. not touching him. He's sitting there, he's praying, he's studying Torah. And the king, the king tells the advisors, 
why are the lions not eating Daniel? Maybe he's a man of God, and maybe it was good that he was praying, and maybe he's a righteous man and he doesn't deserve to die. So the, the, instead of the advisors telling the king, you're right, he's a righteous man, take him out of, the, out, of the, out of the pit, they were so jealous of him, they said to the king, no, the lions, they're not hungry. You know, give him a few more days. You know? So the king said, oh, they're not hungry. Okay, we'll put you guys inside and we'll see. Maybe they're not hungry. You can join Daniel, sit down for a party. The, so they, they lowered the, 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 the advisors of the king the Gentiles that were the ones who tattletailed to, on, the, on Daniel, they didn't even hit the ground. The lions ripped them apart yes. even before they hit the ground. They tore them over the head of Daniel. They tore them to pieces, to shreds. Um, you know, and this is, you know, this is, this it's, is I mean, obviously I can't. But it's this a is perfect, exactly it's a perfect this, this picture. Is what it is. But this is a perfect picture. This is a perfect picture, you know. Um, so number one, uh, you know, I like this Darius fast, you know, you know, he, I'm fasting from the evening till the morning, you know, so you can always say, yeah, I'm on a Darius fast, you know, from all my life, you know, and then I break the fast in the morning. So anyhow, you know, besides the thing is that I can testify that after, you know, uh, why did I leave the house in Jerusalem to all the four corners of the world? Because I knew and I trusted Hashem, regardless in what situation I'm put in, regardless in what, you know, lions den, I will be brought, brought out. You know, and I think every righteous person who is, you know, studying the Torah and he knows that, yes, okay, when it's my time to die, I die. Okay, so what? I have to die anyway, you know, but it's a very important issue. How do I die, you know? Upward standing, you know, right with Hashem, or, you know, because you're schmuck and you're punished, you know. So this is the issue. But today, it's very, uh, you know, the whole business issue. So this is, you know, you were talking about the hookers and, you know, this whole issue that people, that, that people are trying to suck you in. So you now we have to see that the, all the movies, all the mainstream media is, you know, to desensitize you, you know, uh, to do it yourself you know but, so when you when you see people shooting without remorse you know uh, sleeping around without remorse and so on and so on then you get desensitized you see this now so now you see it so now you can do it yourself uh, uh, Ulf, i want to say one thing yeah. there's a small kid there's a small kid that he he was sitting with a bunch of it's one of the most you know crazy videos that's going viral there's this kid and he's sitting with a few girls and obviously, so he says, I didn't know I'm going to be sitting here with a bunch of girls that don't know how to read. Right. And then he says, name 10 books and they don't know how. To, and what, why, why does that even matter? You know, what does it matter if these people don't know how to read? The answer is, is because the hooker herself doesn't know that she's important. She doesn't know because absolutely just like they're, te they're testing us to see if we, know that we're special but they also think that they're a piece of garbage if not if they would know how to read in other words if they would study the torah because what else is there to read yeah when i she says i read i read the uh, game of thrones she said she meant the series the movie that she knows that most movies have a book behind it so she says i i like the series game of thrones so he says to her that's not a name of a book if you want to know the name of the book it's fire and whatever and you didn't read it, obviously, because you just watched the movie because you don't know how to read, you know? So, so he really shoved it in her face. You're an ignorant, you know, person. You don't know how to read. You don't know your own value. You don't know our value, you know? Um, in the beginning, right, right when TikTok was coming out and, and people weren't actually putting valuable information over there, but people were trying. The point was that there was another thing that people were saying, like, um, there was like, you see a girl and she's like, eh, you know how much money I made on, on, on doing, you know, inappropriate things. So you have another girl that would say, oh, I don't do that. You know why? Because I actually have parents that raised me, you know? In other words, if your parents raised you or at least yeah. were involved in your life to a certain extent, then you're not just going to put yourself out there like a piece of garbage. Again, it's about value. It's about, you know, who, who, the, the hooker doesn't know that she's important. 
The hooker doesn't know that she's important. The soldier that goes and kills doesn't know that he's important. Yes. Absolutely. There's this whole culture. And why? Because they yes. don't know how to read. And when I say they don't know how to read, it's not Harry Potter. And it's not Lord of the Rings. And it's not Game of Thrones. No, we are at the point the only where thing worth reading the is the Bible. Is. No, but this is the issue. Yes. You know, when uh, the prophets, this is what the prophet, Isaiah uh, 28, you know, where the, drunk, the drunkards of Ephraim are. So you give them a book and you say, read this. And they say, no, I cannot read. You know, because it's her. So it is asking, so whom do you want to bring this a revelation? Who do you want to teach Torah? And this is why I said, you know, I said to you, yes, I told you yesterday, leave your finger off TikTok. Because, you know, once you have one, three, five, six, oh, it's a two minutes here, five minutes there, there is absolutely no super duper content. So when I'm listening to five minutes, you know, if at all, I read, you know, sometimes here Rabbi Feld, you know, he sends me like super cool uh, short shiurim, you know, little tell. So I really like them, you know, they are uh, on, a, on an orthodox um, YouTube, like an orthodox um, type of YouTube thing, you know. So this I do, you know, but there is um, only very, very specific information because I want to I want to uh, work. On I think the right, oh, hey. the right way to say it is the house always wins. The house always wins. Yes. And when you go to when you go to gamble with money, you everybody knows that the house always wins. So you, you come in with five bucks, you're walking out with two bucks. And even if you won in the short term, you're going to lose in the long term. The house always wins. That's always. the, the bank always. Wins. And, <laughs> and so so even if you go to TikTok. And yes, you know, we have to have an imp impact on the people that are lost, but the house always wins. And that's why even if you can get something out of TikTok, one answer, but I think that the, the, the way to explain it is the house always wins. The question is, who is the house? So Facebook, uh, the house is the CIA and the 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 uh, the American government um uh, TikTok the house is the Chinese government and Twitter the house is Elon Musk um but, but also uh, so the house the always wins. it's also all military we please have to understand that the this whole issue i told you it's a business everything is a business Everything is a business. So you open up Facebook, it's a business. So you open oh, oh, I would I would say like this. As far as the government is concerned, everybody's a business. No, also the government is a business. You as a person no, yeah, the government. You know, right. The but that's how no, oh, I'm I'm not a business. I'm a father. I am yes. a Jew. Yes. The government yes. wants me to be a business because yes. they want to if I come to if a cop pulls me over and I you tell them are in your I father's talk to business. You, you are in your father's business. We, Hashem, has a business to do on earth. So we are in business. No, one second. Avadai heim, veloi avadim la avadim. They are my servants and not slaves to slaves. The Hashem yes. says, also, if, if someone takes upon himself the, the Torah law, it says in, in Pirkei Avais, I'm going to say it in Hebrew and then I'm going to translate. Call me she mekabel alav, all ma chutshamayim, I, I hope I quoted that correctly. But the, the point is, whoever takes upon himself the yoke of heaven, takes upon himself, like you said, swears that my terms and conditions is the Bible. So Hashem pushes away from him the terms and conditions of the derech eretz, the way of the land. When a, po when a police officer stops a car he's, he's, and he asks you for ID, the reason why he can't talk to you before he gets your ID is not because he needs to know if you're a criminal. It's because he wants to identify you as a business and talk to you as a business. But if you tell him, I'd like to identify today as a father, I'd like to identify as a human being, I'd like to identify as a Jew that's, that's, that's le living in his land. Would you like to talk to me as a father? Would you like to talk to me as a, as a human being? Would you like to talk to me as an individual that's just, traveling in his land and the cop probably the right answer would be no i have no business talking to a human being 
I have no business talking to a father. I have nothing to tell you. I have Kawhi because I don't have control over you as a human being. I only have control over you as a business. Would you like to identify, like we say, would you like to identify as a business? Then I can say, yeah, I have to give you a ticket. You have to do it like this and like that and da 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 But if you tell me I'm identifying as a human being that lives on the land, then the police has no real uh, yes. business. He has no business bothering you. Yes, that is, but you know that. You, you know that. There are some other people out there who know that. Yeah, but the situation with the business issue is worldwide. It's worldwide. In the moment you, um, you know, I mean, this is the whole issue that when you have an ID, that basically it identifies a business, you know, which is issued by the government. But hardly right, but, anybody... But all, all. I can cancel my business membership. Yes. I can cancel my I, my business. I can cancel my, my, my passport. Absolutely. I can cancel my yes. Kudat Zuhut. Yes. I can cancel my business. I yes. don't need that. Yes. And, I if I don't, and if it works against me, then yes. I, why should I have it? Yes, you can. But when you do that, when you do that, then the business of the Fed continues, the business of the Vatican continues, the business of Israel continues. It all continues. None and of my business. <laughs> would, oh, and I please would like to tell, you know, this is, okay, this sorry. is very hard, you know. Um, we are talking about Torah. So when I go against Torah, yeah, this is what we have now. This is why people think we are, you know, uh, domestic terrorists because we are saying, yes, we are looking for the kingdom because it's written in the Torah. Yeah. So in that moment, you see, hey, we want to have a kingdom. Oh, the whole hell breaks loose because people are saying, oh, you know, they want to have a theocracy. It's a dictatorship. Uh, we cannot do this and this and this anymore and so on and so on. So you see all the uh, all the time. And they are, we're talking about now years. I said, listen, guys, you know why it's a business and it's all you have to make it also your business. OK, in the moment we say, OK, no, I do not go to TikTok anymore. I do not pay to Facebook. No, I go to TorahClub.com or I come to MNGlobal.com and I participate in the Torah in the, uh, the, uh, the initiative. Not org. Well, uh, in the Sun Heaven Heaven initiative. Org, yeah. And I put my, I know I do not pay these guys. No, I pay these guys. In that moment, you make it your business to liberate people until you come to the top. The top, please. It's the Pope. He owns it. And the Moshiach, you know, the Moshiach is the heir of that. So he inherits everything. This is how the world is set up. I cannot just tell you, you know, this is what we have. Every Everybody has to understand this. Yes. This is the exit of the matrix. This is how this we get out the of the matrix. Exactly. This is the exile of the matrix because they wanted to make sure, okay, there is, there has to be somebody has to be born. People have to be in Israel and so on and so on. So this is why everybody is put in a text list. So that at the end of day, when now the Pope comes and says, okay, is everybody accounted for? You know, we occupied here uh, Judea now for 2023 years. Okay. So, um, so who is now first? I mean, this is 100%. Now, for sure. So below the, the all, all business units, Israel, the United States, they are bankrupt in the meantime. You know, Washington DC is bankrupt. They're all business units. So this is why we are currently in such a distress because people are sitting there on on uh, on on um, you know on company heads you know but these companies are like totally absolutely bankrupt i mean you take a look at the you know united states what 31 trillion yeah oh if i want to say that that the the reason why the world is bankrupt right now from a spiritual perspective is everything that starts in this world is because it starts in shamayim it starts in heaven and and then after it happens in heaven, it affects the world down here. So if there's a bankruptcy situation in heaven, then you're going to see that happen here. And the currency of heaven is Torah and mitzvahs, acts of goodness and kindness, fulfilling the seven laws of Noah, fulfilling the commandments, studying as much Torah as possible. 
And when we say that the world is on the verge of a bankruptcy, what this means is, is that me and you talking is one of the most rare and important things in the world. We, what we do actually, my name is Yosef and, and you guys call yourself the nation of Ephraim. And I'm sure you, what, the, the work of Yosef is to, to, to bring the Hashem's light milmaila lamata from Absolutely. up down here. How do we do that? What's the difference between milmata? I'll explain. When, when a Jew studies Torah and he's just doing the commandments every single day, that is milmata lamaila. He's, he's saying, look, Hashem, I'm fulfilling what you do. Now you, uh, this is what I'm giving. I'm, I'm paying tax to Hashem by fulfilling the commandments, by doing Hashem's will. When we sit here together and we say, Hashem, look, I know you don't like this place. There's a lot of Roman people killing, murdering, raping, stealing. You know, they're taking down uh, Andrew Tate, top G, but they're letting all the pedophiles from Epstein go free. So the world is upside down. However, Hashem, we're putting together a Sanhedrin. We're talking to the right wing, ultra orthodox yes. wing in the Knesset. We're screwing around with the system of Edom. Absolutely. We're exposing Rome. Yes. This is Milmaila Lamata, where Hashem looks down and he's like, oh, they're actually getting things put together. Oh, that, that's making me want to come down quicker. So there's two things that are happening here. Milmata Lamaila from bottom up, which is every time we do a mitzvah, every time we fulfill Hashem's commandments in the Torah, we give charity every day, every time we put a coin in a charity box, every, even if it's five cents, every time we donate to people like the nation of Ephraim or the, the, the Sanhedrin initiative, we're doing a mitzvah of, of, of supporting uh, good causes and studying Torah, praying every time we pray, every time we study. This is fulfilling the kingdom of Hashem in this world. We're listening to Hashem's commandments. Like we said, we are Hashem's servants and not slaves of slaves. And Milmaila Lamata, bringing Hashem's light down, is preparing this world, cleaning up the garbage, making a landing space for Hashem's kedusha by, by, by uh, Hashem's holiness, um, by establishing the Sanhedrin, by, by eradicating the enemies of Hashem, Amalek, and preparing the Temple Mount for the building of the Temple, Be'ezrat Hashem. And of course, Ulf, I, I say yes, um, if we're talking about uh, breaking the business of the, uh, the corrupt business, again, I believe, Ulf, whenever you talk about the darkness of Edom and, and the, you know, like in the Game of Thrones uh, uh, the video, they have the throne made out of a bunch of uh, yes, yes, swords. Yes. So that's like Edom, you know? It's just a bunch of murder. It should be, it might as well be dripping blood at the same time. And every every sword represents a million people that were killed. So this is the throne of Edom, you know? So this whole business concoction, you know, this whole poisonous cocktail that they put together with all these laws in order to entrap um uh you know the Egyptian the Egyptian continuation of exile. Um so this whole this whole thing really is darkness. Absolutely. And the moment pe the moment we shed light, the moment people will just study the Torah, just like when you turn the light oh, on, the darkness is, uh, okay. disappears. Uh, Yossi, Yossi. We need to turn the light you know on. What? We are now 56 years in uh, in Israel. So why uh, in Jerusalem? Why do we have the uh, situation? Because people before us studied Torah, hallelujah, and they brought us into this thing. So they built this for us that we are able to take control. So now we have, there are currently out there people who had never in any way, in any way uh, 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 relationship with the Torah, with the Jewish people. For them, it's like completely, totally new. So completely, totally new. So now we set out not to those people who, you know, just come out there, you know, totally, oh, I have no idea what we're talking about. So because I'm so long in this in quotation business, you know, so I'm now uh, 27 years, 
27 years ago, stepped uh, first time on uh, the soil of Israel, you know, January 1996. So this is now 27 years ago. So during this time, you know, we talked about the whole issue of the International Christian Embassies. You have to understand, yes, there are new guys out there. Yes, there are people out there that need help because they have never heard about anything. For them, it's everything is new. Beautiful. We never start, I never started out this because I started out to collect, you know, to really assemble all these guys out there who do this now for 10, 20, 30 years. And they're seeing now the, uh, the situation. So the whole throne of um, Game of Throne, this is exactly what's the, in their people's head. This is what they know because they watch TV series. But the real throne currently of the beast sits in Rome. And everybody takes a look at this. You know, we are talking about no, Rome. It's the same yes, thing. It's Adam the same thing. Adam we are Rome is Rome. About yes. Not some uh, spiritual issue, puppy puppy. No, we are talking about Fakada. Man, he is the throne of Peter. He sits there. Ronald Lauda was just there. Now the seventh king died. So what's happening to him? So we do not talk, you know, this is all issue. We nobody no, wants oh, to oh. 90% of Game of Thrones is 100% correct. 90% is good. They, they they did a great job of it, of showing exactly how Edom, Rome, Ace of works. Yeah. Murder to an extent that's not normal and and uh, uh, adultery to an extent that that's no that's not normal. I did not watch the whole video. I I just it was so popular that it you know popped up I, once I didn't, in a while. I, I didn't watch it at all, but they have a museum here in Split in Croatia because they uh, shot the movie here in um, you know in Croatia. Uh -huh. And there are uh, so, uh, one hundred twenty five thousand tourists or so. They spent like really bucks. that came joining here, Americans. You know this is why the so, by the way. So the, the one second, the bloodshed and the adultery are the both two things that they get correct. The only thing that we are here to tell everybody is that it is not um, fiction. It, it's a documentary. It's a documentary of reality. And the real king is the Pope, Rome, and this is the way that they function. Like we spoke about it in this. Class and in the and in the and in the Zoom Torah lesson last week, Rome is all about degenerate, making you uh, feel like you're not special, making you feel like you're just another soldier, just yeah. another human being, and that that your life is worthless and other people's life is worthless. This is the pits of depression, the pits of 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 evil in the person himself. Trying to manifest, just like Hitler brought out the most evil in everybody to a point where they're actually making factories on how to kill people. Like, imagine that, you know, like Ford made a, fa he was, Ford was a very, you know, he wasn't a nice guy, but he, the, the guy, uh, but at least he made a factory to build cars. These people made a factory. How should we kill? How should we, how should we steal? These people, are, the, how should we, how should we, the internet is a factory. How can we make, uh, uh, you know the most degenerate uh, adultery in 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 in, 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 the, in the imagination of of you know even King Solomon didn't have the kind of access that we have to you know to today and and in this degenerate world. You know this is so the whole right thing now, is true. Where you, and right you we're now, just connecting it to reality. Uh, uh, absolutely, For where you said right now, you know I think everybody knows now. Okay, Hitler. Um, was not such a, a, a very nice person. No? And um, he is always port portrayed uh, uh, from the left as being to the right. So they, um, co currently, the political, um, the op political opinion is that Hitler is a right-wing fascist. But unfortunately, that is not true. He was a socialist. He was a, a he national was a, socialist. Absolutely. He was a left socialist. He was a left socialist. Um, and the, uh, the, the difference was that he submitted under Rome because he was a Catholic. You know, and this is totally, um, you know, this is always blacked out. No, he is a prime example of a defender of the Roman Catholic faith. He submitted to the, uh, uh, to the Pope. And signed the concordat. That I want to say also, Ulf, 
Well, uh, Trump is the only president that in his time, uh, there was no war in Russia. So Obama, uh, there was Crimea. Uh, 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 Joseph, it is very, yeah. uh, you know, it is very important to understand, you know, this whole issue with this uh, Roman issue. Because we said the contract, why is the Pope the Pope still? Because Benito Mussolini, the fascist leader of the, the prime minister of Italy, he gave him that kingdom. So this is By the way, oh, you know, you know that Rome, the whole Italy is falling apart. They're giving away castles for free. Yes, and I want to say, yes. oh, oh, this is also a spiritual thing. And and, and Israel is yes. growing. Because it's and it's Rome written is in falling. the prophets. Because it's written in the prophets. And you know, because it says that the fourth beast, you know, from chapter seven of Daniel, you know, please, you know. You, we read this. We read this now because it is so important to understand. You know, yes, we think biblical. We think Bible. We, we, we Bible. So now some left lunatic comes around and he tells me, okay, now I have to stop breathing because we're living in a climate change and I have to strip naked because blah, 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 blah. Because the world is going into an apocalypse. So no, baby, what, what are you talking about? Okay, so now how am I conquered? So when I take a look, okay, where do I find this? Ah, okay, the, the, the Hashem is coming in the whirlwinds of the Thou. So he is destroying, he's punishing the nations. And all. So, um, so I know that everything what is connected with climate, because I read this, uh, okay, I know, no, it's connected with what's happening with Hashem. But there, it has these... Um, this business effect you have to understand that there are like the spiritual children of of satan if you like accusing you the whole time no you are not worthy it's your fault you're polluting the earth you know it's not better it's better for you not to be born no you it's and so on and so on so these are now these children coming out after 50 years 60 years democracy 70 years democracy Okay. Oh, I want to say. And, I want to also say that Rome. One second. Rome. Rome is uh, the, the, this. Okay. So we spoke about the soldier that goes and he kills for no reason, indiscriminately, and then he wants to see the righteous man fall for the hooker. And now there's another part of the story that I want to fill in, and that is that the the. Uh, the the one second one second one second i just had it the uh, no. i forgot i forgot i'm going to remember in a minute I'll, I'll 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 let you know when i remember there's the the, the romans the what was it okay so the hooker the the bloodshed Oh, I'm sorry. And then, and then he's sitting there again with his, with his uh, eating himself up, even after he sees the righteous person fall for the hooker. After he's finished, finally, you know, making the righteous man sin, he goes back to his house because again he's living on a pension because he spilled so much blood, and he's living on lands of the people that he killed, and with their money, with the stolen money, and then he says to himself. I still deserve to die because even if the righteous person sin, I still deserve to die because I killed a thousand people. It doesn't matter. It's like, it's like, it's like somebody that's hungry and it doesn't matter how much he eats. He's still hungry. And that's his curse. So even after he gets the righteous person to sin because, and he works very hard to do that, he comes back home and he says, I'm still worse than the righteous person because I actually went and killed people like an idiot. So he still believes that he deserves to die. And that is the left. The left have done unimaginable sin. I actually have a family member that when he was young, he did a lot of stupid things. He didn't, I'm not going to, he didn't kill anybody. He, he was just, you know, a teenager. Stupid. He went around doing, yeah, he, he stole some crap and whatever. And ever since then, from his guilt, he tries to, uh, assist and help and give back to the community, like they say, even Pablo Escobar, you know, even though he was running drugs and everything, but he gave back to the community kind of to try to like straighten out his mind, you know? So 
So this this whole thing of like the left, the whole the whole narrative that we don't deserve to be here. Why don't you deserve to be here? Because you sin all day. So imagine this person was a hooker, this girl was a hooker, or this guy was killing people and or stealing work for the police to steal from people for 20, 30 years. He wants to die. He's waiting for someone to kill him. He knows he deserves to die. So he becomes, he says, I'm not worthy. So he becomes a leftist. He becomes a leftist because the leftists say, we don't deserve to be here. Does it mean that the righteous people don't deserve to be here? No, the righteous people deserve to be here. And that's why they're right wing. That's why they follow Hashem. That is the real dynamic. So yes. the people who know they don't deserve to be here, they become leftists. They don't deserve, they say the squirrels, the squirrels are better than me. You know why? Because the squirrels, at least they didn't kill their fellow squirrels. I am a bad human being. Because this is this is the way Hashem makes the world. You can, because you're a human being, you can go higher than an angel and you can go lower than the devil. Sometimes someone goes so low that even if, even the devil is surprised how, how low he went. Even, even the evil inclination is surprised how low this person went. So this is this is this is how a human being is. It says, I made somebody that can walk between all those who stand. It says, I created a human being which is a mahalik, he's a walker between all those who stand, which is an angel. An angel has only one foot, according to the Jewish like world. We put our feet together. <laughs> yeah, uh, almost like a flamingo. <laughs> an angel has one foot. Yeah, when, when we say Nakedisha, which is a prayer on Shabbat, we put our feet together like one foot. This is like imitating the way an angel stands. When we pray, uh, we praise Hashem and we say Kadosh three times. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole world is full of his glory. This is a prayer from the angels that Moses learned when he was for 40 days uh, on Mount Sinai. Super, a super. Few other so then, then please, Yossi, then yeah. let's please look. I, I have this now open with Daniel because I think it's very, very important to understand. Look at it. When we came to Jerusalem, 1967. Zoom in, zoom in, if you can. Okay, it's uh, how am I? When we came to Jerusalem, you know, 1967, 1967, we had the two most extreme positions. We had the uh, the ultra orthodox Jewish position, the Judaism, and uh, we had Roman Catholicism. And the complete secular Zionists, so they arrived now in, uh, you know, to make, make it. So now we are 55 years later and we said Rome, Rome. Now think about and how these last decades developed. So, and we have here the fourth beast, you know. Um, after this, I saw in the night visions and behold, a fourth, you know, today you would say, okay, I turned on late night show. I turned on late night war and I saw this television, you know, television show. And behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly. And it had great iron teeth, you know, Roman, the Roman iron. It devoured and break in pieces and stamped the residue with its feet of it. And it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it. And it had 10 horns. Now, so I, uh, I think we all agree after now 2000, the Rome is the only issue what fits. Now, are we are now even 70 years old. Now, um, it says here, um, so here, I beheld till the thrones were cast down and the ancient of days sit, whose garment was white as snow and the hair of his head like the wool. Now, the judgment was set and the books were opened. I beheld then because of the voice of the great words, oops, in which the word spake. Uh, I beheld even till the beast was slain and his body was destroyed and given to the burning flame. So like, you know, Adam will be burned like stubble. You know, uh, there won't be no survivor in Adam. So um, as concerning the rest of the bees, they had their dominion taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season and time. 
And I saw in the night's vision and behold, one like a son of man, you know, Luke Skywalker, as we said, you know, came with the clouds of heaven and came to the ancient of days and they brought him near before him. And there was given him dominion and glory and the kingdom that all people, nation, languages should serve him. His dominion, not the voting machine, is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. So, the Zohar, Ulf, oh, can I say something? The Zohar. Uh, 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 please, would, you okay. know, before you just say, uh, please consider that we are now in the time we are experiencing this is all life. Nobody took a look at the Pope. They have no idea about Edom. They don't know a history of uh, Jerusalem. And they have no idea. They do not know. They just wait for Jesus. And everybody thinks it's Jesus. Oh, yeah, the son of man. No, it's not Jesus. So, but the point is that to give hand over Whoever that is, according to this guy, the whole world to order is set up. Whoever fulfills every requirement to take away the Pope, he was given the dominion. And this is what we are experiencing now. And it, it's a business because the the uh, after the world order, you know, we are now in the dollar system. The dollar system has the, the um, you know, the pyramid on it, the sign of Joseph and so on. And we are experiencing this now before our eyes and i believe you know so this is now because we had 75 years israel we have 56 years jerusalem and so on the time of babylon the time of greek the greek philosophy you know this is over it's all 100 off can i can i can i say what uh, the zohar says about that prophecy by the way is that okay okay so um, the Zohar says about that prophecy that there's going to be a time when there's going to be a small green guy with one eye that's going to come to all the nations and he's going to tell them, I am God, serve me. And he's going to do some miracles and whatever. He's going to come to the rulers of the world. Not, no one's going to know about it on the lower level. And they're all going to serve him. And then he's going to come... And they're all going to say that he's the way and he is true and he is everything. And and he's going to come to Edom and he's going to come to Ishmael. He's going to come to everybody. And they're all going to give up and they're going to give it away to him. Then he's going to come to Israel and he's going to say, I am God, serve me. And Israel's going to say, no, you're not God. We're not serving you. And then he's going to pin all the nations of the world against Israel. And and they're going to go, they're going to go with him and and the the he's going to he's going to attack israel but he's going to be scared to attack because he's not sure he's not sure if, if there's going to be a situation where the mashiach ben yosef and the mashiach ben david are are popping up and it's not it's not clear if they're alive or dead and because he's not sure if they're alive okay. or dead alive wait alive. a minute alive yeah yeah at, at least yeah, so the ben he, joseph at least the ben joseph you know about the Ben so, David. We wait a minute, wait a minute. Before, but, uh... Okay, so he's not going to be sure if Mashiach is alive or dead. And just from that suffix, just from that... Um, uh, no, just from that... Uh, uh, tut. In other words, because he's not sure if Mashiach ben David and Mashiach ben Yosef is alive, he hesitates to attack Israel. And that time... During that time of hesitation, I think Mashiach ben David resurrects Mashiach ben Yosef, or or the other way around, one of the two, and they both come back to life. I'm not. I don't remember exactly. I learned this when I was uh, in uh, ninth grade, tenth grade. So I don't remember exactly, but I have to go look back at it again. Um, so one of them resurrects the other one in the meantime, and then they really come back to life, and then they kick. But, but the, the main thing is with, with, uh, with Mashiach, the way Mashiach takes the throne is very interesting, is that all the nations of the world kill each other, yes. you know, because they're all very strong. They never, they don't care about Mashiach because they don't see him as a threat because Mashiach is just not, never, he's the weakest, he's the, 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 the loser of the bunch yeah. when it comes to the leaders of the world. He's insignificant. Because the way he fights is not the way he fights with Hashem's word. He doesn't fight with swords and with, with weapons. 
So, so because of that, the nations of the world don't see him as a threat and they don't care about him really. And what happens is all 70 nations end up killing each other in this battle for the throne. And when they're all dead, the only leader is Ani Reichel Valachamor, the poor guy on the donkey, shows yeah. up, as they say. Mashiach, Mashiach, Mashiach shows up, and the kingdom is his. And, and uh, that's basically this, the concept. Uh, um, you know, this, uh, closing statements. But, but this, was a, this was the whole um, issue, you know, with the, okay, does the Mashiach come on a donkey no, or uh, through the clouds of heaven? So now we saw the passage of the clouds of heaven. Now, um, now after going through some time, I say, no, no, the, the um, first you come. Um, so it's not either or. First, I came, you know, poor, just a hit. So, but now you come back and then you come with the first class airplane with the new perhaps Air Force One, you know, through the clouds of heaven. So, but it's very important to understand, I think, for everybody who's out there, especially those who are coming from the Christian background, it is very clearly that it has to be a human. And this has been like always this big issue that because it's written that the guy is coming out of the clouds, okay? Now, of course, you see in, t in TV and, uh, you know, of course, in, um, you know, in, in movie theaters, people fly, you know, you see Superman running around with a red cape fire eyes and so on and so on so everybody read this and it's one of the biggest issues you know i talked with with uh, also with christians and so on i said I listen when it's written here he's coming through the clouds i mean what do you expect now really an alien an alien coming now out of another dimension who comes in and then does what how does he want to prove i mean uh, you know okay does he have so the first issue somebody would come you know let's say jesus shows up Okay, white, you know, white thing. If, if Jesus is son of God, then he's not, he can't be Mashiach, but whatever. Yeah, yeah, whatever. So, he, uh, yeah, but um, you know, Israel is son of God. So, I mean, he is Mashiach. I mean, you know, Ephraim is son of God. We are all sons of God. So, but no, now I know, Jesus but they say that by, according to Christianity, Jesus was conceived by God. So, he is not a son of yes, man. Yes, yes. Okay, I and was Mashiach also made by God. God. This is the whole issue, you know. But the the appearance is so. so yeah, but you but you, but you have a mother. You came from your mother, right? Correct. Yes. You're not a you're not an Elon Musk robot. Absolutely. You're not a Superman. Exactly. Yeah. And this is the biggest issue. In the moment Jesus would arrive, he comes out another dimension. The first thing he would be put into prison to say, hey, "Who are you, guy? Are you kidding me? What you made yourself? You did? Uh, oh, you uh, are you dangerous? And did you inflict yourself? You have some wounds? Are you crazy? Where, where's your paper? Where's the text number? Are you? <laughs> you know? I mean, he would be put into prison or, or in, the, in, in the sanity house. You know? And every time it says, "Hey." You know, now everyone will see it. I said, listen, guys, only because it's now written, we know, okay, is this now literal? Do, is this now, uh, does it mean, you know, ah, uh, you know, it's slowly, slowly, first you see something very diffuse and then it becomes clearer, clearer and every time. But the main point, it, it has to be a human. It has to be a human. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So for Hashem, and this is the whole uh, um, issue with the uh, with the left, with the left, okay? Because they do not believe that Hashem made Hashem, uh, made man and Adam. So when it's written here now, the son of man, it's a son of uh, you know, it's a human being, you know, Aramaic. But when we uh, talk about the Ben Adam, well, then we have uh, uh, the uh, it's it must be a human, you know, and this human must do something you know to exchange the pope regardless who it is now and now we just have to go very systematically and this is what we did okay how is the the structure of the world set up okay you have presidents you have courts and so on and so on you have human rights you have um uh, the money order the worldwide money order and now i said okay so when you are the invitation to everybody to anybody do you feel part of Israel? Are you Jewish? Do you live outside and think about, okay, um, you know, do I belong to Israel or whatever? So the first thing is make a sign up. 
make a sign up and proclaim, yes, I am part of Israel, you know, so when you're somewhere out, make a, a sign up on zion5777.com, become a part of the nation of Ephraim, you know, so when you're Jewish, make sure, um, get in touch with Rabbi Edery, you know, from mnglobal.com. Dot org. Oh. MNGlobal.org. So, MNGlobal.org. So register there because it is our human right. It is our human right to demand. Okay, who is this guy? Because right now we see that the left is screaming and so on. So there are enough people who are looking into the Bible right now, and they said, "No, it's it's. I, I cannot. I, I cannot agree to this anymore. It's impossible. I cannot agree to the vaccination mandates. I cannot agree to this." Uh, disgusting LGBT. I cannot, I cannot, it's, I, I need my religious freedom. I have to go to Jerusalem and fix this. All these people, in the moment, we continue doing this, going out and proclaiming, yes, it's our right. We don't care what the left says. I don't give a fig. You, you want to be a, you want to, a guy with a dick, you want to be a, a, a woman? Okay. But don't expect me to treat you like as a normal person. Oh, this is something that we hopefully we'll discuss next time in more detail. But the free choice is, you see, just like Edom, yeah. on one hand, you know, whenever you, when you're selling somebody crap and you want it and you want to, you know, you, you, you make it look like gold. So, so that, you know, it's like the, the food that we have today, like 80% garbage and like, you know, and, and 20% real stuff. So even the lies of Edom, have a little bit of truth that's kind of blowing the whole yeah. crap, the whole the whole concoction together. So, of course, there's a certain there are certain truths in the way of Adam. There are certain truths that the hooker represents, which is be fruitful and multiply. But that's exactly. But Adam takes that truth, perverts it, messes it so much up that it that. That, that the girls don't want to get married. They don't want to have kids. The boys are scared of the women because the women have too many rights. And if someone comes to kill you, you have to defend yourself. But Rome doesn't defend itself. It goes on offense. It says, I'm defending myself by killing everybody else. Absolutely. So we're, you know, and I'm so, very so they pervert the truth. No, it's, we are very happy that we and are. I just want to say that I want to say like this. We don't get killed for yeah. this anymore. You know, this is a very issue, uh, uh, Joseph. We, we, this is why we can totally be free to do now the will of Hashem. You know, and this is also... Oh, I want to I wanna say even more. I want to say even more. Most of the tickets today that they give to people are on stuff that never happened. Yeah. For example, <laughs> exactly. So you have to pay insurance in case your car gets smashed. <laughs> You have to pay, um, you have to, uh, you can get a ticket for running a red light or going fast because maybe you were not safe and you could have maybe killed somebody. So, so Rome is going out and we're going to kill everybody in the whole world in the name of self-defense and self-preservation, right? And so, so America doesn't even actually, at this point, there's, they're not even creating anything. They don't have any value. China is working around the clock to provide America with sneakers and with, 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 with clothing and, and they're making everything. So China actually is making real value. And America, the only thing they're doing is killing everybody that doesn't buy their shit with their garbage money. So, of course, we need to understand the whole dynamic. And regarding, of course, everybody needs to understand that you have a spark of Mashiach in you. You need to flex this muscle of redemption be a man, be a husband, be a Noahide, yes. be a Jew, study the Torah, get more religious in, 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 in study the Torah back to back, study Rashi, study the oral tradition, Rashi. study the Talmud. <laughs> Rashi. <laughs> Rashi. Yeah, Rashi. And, and, um, and of course, you have to understand who you are, what's going on. You want to exit the matrix? You need to know the matrix better than the matrix knows the matrix. Yes. yes. And uh, with that, hopefully we'll see you guys next time. And thank you so much all for having me. And it's been real cool. Absolutely. So.